Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mental Health Live. Welcome to Mental Health Live. This evening with Musao Justin Nachimuli Chigosi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Mental Health Live with Musao Justin Nachimuli Chigosi. Thank you for joining me this evening. It's a very uncertain moment. It's a difficult moment in life and in history. And we are all here to witness it. And we are here as professionals to support you and how you can deal with it. Welcome, Ronnie, you're the first. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Musawa Justin Nachimuli Chigazi, and we are live today to discuss how we can support each other, how we can manage this isolation period. So the question this evening is, how do you manage during isolation? How do you look after your mental health and well-being during isolation? Ladies and gentlemen, it's a very uncertain moment. It's a difficult time. We are all very sad. We are all very pressured. We are all frustrated. And I know that out there, everyone knows somebody who has passed away. So this evening, I would like to acknowledge and send my deepest sympathy to the family of the late Mrs. Margaret Sally, who passed away in London, to the family of the late Musao Proskovia, who passed away in America, Boston. She was a nurse. And everyone else who has lost their loved ones, everyone else who has got symptoms at this moment in time, everyone else who is struggling with the situation today. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Nachimichigosi, mental health professional and a public health specialist. This evening, as a professional nurse, I would like to speak to our people, members of the public, everyone out there, about mental health. We are in a crisis at the moment. It's not just for physical health, it's for mental health. For those who know me, I'm a mental health advocate as well. I advocate for mental health in the diaspora here in the UK and in Uganda where I come from. So we have a problem at this moment, which is COVID. It has caused dramatic changes. Who are affected at this point in time? We have children who don't know exactly what's going on. We have teenagers who are overflowing with hormones and cannot work out what's going on. But we also have people who have been described as at risk. At risk people are people who might have an underlying physical health problem like COPD, like hypertension, like diabetes, like HIV, like cancer, who might actually be more at high risk of dying very, very quickly with COVID. COVID is killing everybody, but those people are placed at risk. People with sickle cells, people with loads of problems are placed at risk. What are we saying this moment in time? These clear government guidelines, those need to be followed. But what I'm here to talk about this evening is anxiety, mental health, and well-being during this period. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an immune system. Our immune system gets affected by anxiety. It gets affected by stress and mental health. So very briefly, when somebody is extremely stressed, the body produces toxic chemicals that actually reduce their immunity. So your immunity is lower when you're anxious and stressed about a situation. So during COVID-19 crisis, when people are watching news of death and death every single day, when people are worried about their health, their immunity actually drops. And when you don't have psychological resilience, when you're not strong to go through and your immunity drops, you're likely to catch things very, very quickly. Some people developing flu symptoms and they are worried it's COVID and that makes it even worse because you have an acquired immune system and you've got an immune system that you're born with. So 
when you're struggling through periods like this, I'm going to speak to you about how to manage your stress levels so that your immunity does not drop. Because you need to remain strong through this to be able to fight COVID. We don't know when this is going away. We don't know how long it's going to take for us to contain it as NHS and health professionals. But while it's being contained and you're following government guidelines, how are you looking after your stress levels to make sure that you're regulating your emotions, you're sleeping well, you're eating properly, you're doing your exercises to be able to manage any symptoms that come through? This is what we're going to talk about today. So... Among the groups of people that I mentioned as at-risk people, we have healthcare professionals, our nurses, our doctors, people who look after us. We tend to forget them in this crisis because they're frontline workers. They're supposed to be looking after us. But during this crisis, who is supporting them to manage their own mental health? I'm a nurse by background. I've been at the front line and what we tend to do during this moment in time, we work extremely hard. We pick up every shift to cover the ward and support staff. We run around like there's not tomorrow. So we never stop to think. We run from task to task to task to task. And when we get home, we are still mothers and dads and parents and uncles and aunties. And most of the time, we have family members ringing relying on us to support them through this so we're mentioning ways in how you guys can look after each other also think about ways on how we can look after health professionals many thanks to supermarkets who are letting people you know mental health you know professionals go fast in the line and do shopping i think they're giving them slots to do shopping a lot of goodies are being sent on towards to support nurses but it's the emotional resilience, emotional resilience that we need to work on. So this evening, ladies and gentlemen, we've got categories of people at the moment who are locked up in isolation and they have children with special needs, children with autism and learning disabilities. They cannot be contained. The routine has changed. They cannot work it out. They don't know what is going on at this moment in time. I have a sad story. Last week, I was only, you know, contacted by somebody and a young boy of 15 who has autism was being sectioned under the Mental Health Act. Those who understand that will know. But he was being sectioned because he smashed up the, smashed up the house. So he's in the house. There's no garden. There's nowhere to escape. He is moving up and down the stairs. His routine has dramatically changed and he does not understand what's going on. So people who have children with special needs, there's a lot of support out there. Look onto the website for your councils and see what the council is offering. Look into your children's files and find out if they have an education and health care plan. What does it say? Contact their you know, social workers. Look around. There's support out there that can be given so that these children do not feel contained. Look out there and find it. Domestic violence. This is a topic very close to my heart. I was reading from the Office of National Statistics. Domestic violence has gone up by 25%. That is a lot. People are staying with their partners full time in the house that never used to. Someone once recently said to me, Musawa, I didn't even know this man could do this. Because he used to go out and work, go out then with friends and come home at 10 in the night. He's in the house now with his wife and it's just too much. They're constrained in that environment. They are not working together. They don't understand each other and domestic violence has gone up. And what people are doing, which is not right as well, during this crisis, people are busy drinking alcohol. People have crates and crates of beers in their house and they are drinking a lot of alcohol. This is actually making it worse. This is making the situation worse. Yes, you could be bored. 
yes you don't know what to do but alcohol cigarettes increased use of drugs heroin cocaine amphetamine cannabis these are stimulants and they are making the situation worse further up in the live we'll talk about coping mechanisms things we can do to improve your day today because we don't know how long this lockdown is going to go for how long we are going to stay in this situation but we've got to come out of it with a bit of sanity we've got to come out of it with a bit of sanity so alcohol either give up or drink in moderation there's identified units clinically there's some audios i've done and videos that i've done about how much alcohol you should take a day so domestic violence has increased simply because people are drinking a lot of alcohol, people are using a lot of maladaptive behaviors like drugs, cigarettes, people didn't know each other, now they are contained in that environment. So we need to be able to look out for that. What do we do to support each other in this crisis? There are just simple things that we can do to support each other. Number one, the children at home at the moment, everyone is at home, parents are working at home. We need to maintain the routine that we've always had in the household. If your children woke up to go to school at seven in the morning, make sure they wake up. Set some tasks for the children. Set some tasks for the children. Make sure there's activities to do throughout the day for the children. If you have a garden, let them access fresh air. Let them access the natural resources. They cannot go into the street, but at least they can go in the garden. If you live in a flat, make sure you're ventilating the house. Your windows are open. Make sure your children are hydrated. They're drinking a lot. The advice these days is loads of vitamin C contents. You can make smoothies. They are very fun to make with children. You can give them, you know, lemon water. It's fun to do with children. Have a routine to follow on a daily basis. Have some breaks during the routine. Do some creative activities during the routine. Most importantly, plan your meals. Make sure you're having a good dietary intake. A balanced diet plan it a balanced diet does not mean some expensive posh food it's just carbs and vegetables and the right content somebody at once you know wanted to talk about proteins and they were talking about meat fish chicken these are things that we like to eat in Africa but actually beans peanuts they're a very good source of protein vegetables they're a very good source of protein plan your meals so that you eat healthy during this time we have to fight COVID, and we have to fight it using mind body and soul and if your mind is not healthy you cannot fight it try to exercise throughout the day someone said to me they live in a flat and you know what am i going to do run up and down the stairs do some seat up do some exercises in the household drink a lot of water the advice is warm water drink a lot of water hydrate yourself look after your sleep pattern sleep is very important during this time and if you don't have sleep hygiene and you spend your day sleeping you will not sleep at night that makes it difficult for your mental health. Make sure you don't develop insomnia during this period. Look after your sleep pattern. Do things that will exhaust you so that you're able to have a good rest at night. Social inclusion, an area that I like to talk about. What things do you do socially that make you happy? Those who are very spiritual, like to pray, listen to worship music, read the Bible, people read their books, people write. Writing is very good because it's ventilating. Write things, read your Bible, 
pray if you want to pray. Listen to the kind of music that you like to, you know, to listen to. Listen to comedy. Listen to poems. Do things that are going to make you happy because we have to get through this crisis. If you don't do things that make you happy, you will do things that divert you from happiness. And that will cause you to have poor sleep, that will cause you to have poor diet, that will cause you to drink more. I have someone here who's saying panic attacks, oh, Danny Dan Isaac says panic attacks, anxiety disorder, phobias and depression affect millions of people. But exactly what are they taking? Talk, talking about Musao in is the true remedy. I think that is absolutely right. What we are talking about is the true remedy of anxiety, panic attacks, phobias, and depression. Because the triggers of all these things, like you're saying, Danny, is fear. Most people who are very, very afraid are people who are worried that they already have an underlying illness or a chronic illness that makes them a risk to COVID. And then you have healthcare professionals who come home and think, I've got a temperature, I'm coughing, you know, I've got a dry throat. Am I developing symptoms of COVID? Already we've lost nurses and doctors. If you cannot save your own, it hurts so much. I saw nurses in Coventry Hospital standing in the corridor, taking the body of their fellow nurses, that is, of their fellow nurse. That must have been really painful. So people are very anxious and Fear creates anxiety. Think about your breathing techniques as we're talking about, you know, social inclusion, things that you do to make you feel better. I normally take my deep breaths in and deep breaths out as soon as I wake up in the morning. It just regulates you as a person. Mindfulness. Do you like to meditate? Do you sit down and meditate in the moment of quietness? and just meditate and wipe away your memory and welcome another new day? Do you like to meditate? Do you like having mas a massage just to relax you? Those are things that we do socially as a way of relaxing ourselves. Most importantly, how much social media are you watching? How much news have you let your children watch? And how much news are you watching? Because at the moment, all the news channels are, I call them the news of doom. All they talk about is death, death, and death. But I know that these people have survived COVID and not very many people talk about them. So what I'm trying to say here is limit your social media, the news channels that you watch. And try and focus. We already know what the government is telling us to do. We already know what we need to do. Let's focus on doing that right. Other than focusing on the negativity that is going on in the world. That is the one thing that is going to drive us insane. The negativity. And we need to look after our own mental health and well-being. Back to domestic violence. I'm not sure what's happening um, in other countries, but I know at the moment in UK, if people are worried about domestic violence, you do, you, do, you do call 999 as usual. But if you're in a state where you cannot talk, there is a number you press. You press 55 and the police will know that your abuser is right next to you and you cannot have a conversation. So please do not suffer under domestic violence. Call the police. And if you can't talk, you can apparently play, press 5-5 five, five, and somebody will help you. Do not suffer. You're isolated. If your abuser, you know, you feel you're at risk, you know, of your abuser, do call the police for help. The other thing we need to do, I know I can't go and visit my sister or visit my friends, but we can reach out. Do not isolate yourselves. Call a friend, connect via social media. I mean, give, give, give a phone call, a video call, check on people, how they're doing. F 
friends of yours who live alone. At the moment, a lot of people found dead at home during isolation are people who are living alone, people who live with nobody. If you know somebody who is living alone, reach out to them, check on them on a daily basis, see how they are doing, see how they are doing, check in if they are okay, that will help. Back to our children with um, special needs and how they should be supported. Do not forget to contact your local authority and find out the support out there for children with autism, children with ADHD, children with learning disability. It could be that it's very difficult for you to contain them in the house. They cannot cope with the change in routines and most of the time they do not have an understanding of why things have changed very, very quickly. So you might be able to contact your local authority and find out what support is there for you. There's an organization that I was looking at. So it's called Council for Disabled Children .gov. They've got a lot of resources on there that you can use for your child during this time. Some of them are electronic. The Council for Disabled Children .gov. And their resources are all electronic. They were really, really good when I looked at them. Really quite interesting things that I never knew that, you know, you can find on there at the moment in time. So while we are all isolated and struggling, if you put a routine in place, as we have talked about routines and things to do, if, you tr if you're struggling with alcohol intake, try as much as you can to regulate it because i can tell you now drinking at home is worse than drinking in a pub simply because you drink more at home than you drink in a pub so try and regulate that or simply stop i know you can stop because i haven't had a drink for five years so i know you can stop and i know people who have never had a drink for life Substance misuse, substance abuse in terms of heroin, cocaine, amphetamines, and name it all. This is not the time when you're in isolation. It's just going to make it worse. For people out there who already have a diagnosis of mental health, make sure you're taking your medication. Make sure you receive your, your medication. Make sure you avoid negativity and what is going on in social media because it will only trigger your anxiety. It will only make the situation worse. So make sure you avoid things that are about to trigger your relapse in mental health. Look after yourself as much as you can. Keep in touch with your, you know, your nurse if you've got a community nurse or if you need some sort of support. Keep in touch with people who can relate to you, people who know about your illness, people who will not judge you. Keep in touch with them because that is your coping mechanism during this time. My healthcare professionals out there, nurses, doctors, support workers, therapists, psychologists, name it all. You are our national heroes. But I, also, I always say this. I've been a nurse for over 15 years. I was born first before I became a nurse. So deep inside me, I've had, I have a heart, I have blood pumping, I'm also a human being. So I do understand that nurses, doctors and professionals out there, you're also human beings. You worry about catching COVID every day you go to work. You come back home and you remove your clothes from the door because you don't want to even hug your children before you get into, you know, before you take off those clothes. Every symptom you feel, you're worried that it might be it. So even as healthcare professionals, we do suffer with anxiety. However, we need to think about ourselves as well. So if you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you're a healthcare professional out there, somebody working in a hospital, phlebotomist, anybody, 
you need to think about yourself. You need to think about your mental health and well-being. What are you doing to help you manage this situation? As a nurse, you go to work shift by shift. When do you stop and think? What therapies are you doing to yourself to help you manage this situation? I always say to myself, while I give so much counseling to others, it's better sometimes to try it on me. So while you're doing all the CBTs, the psychosocial support for everybody, try it on yourself as a nurse. We have to stop and think. Otherwise, at the end of this crisis, we will be the one needing hospital beds in mental health services. So for nurses out there, we've got our debrief mechanisms. If you're doing a long day, if you're working a shift, stop and debrief. Do your personal reflection. Now and again. When you go home, do your mindfulness. Do your yoga before you sleep. Wipe out your memory from what happened at work. And focus on what's going on at home. It's a difficult moment. I know that working in hospital, sometimes we never even have a lunch break. But make sure you have a lunch break, nurses out there, doctors out there, professionals out there. Have a lunch break. Stop and feed your body. Look after yourself. Because nobody will. Nobody will. I would like to say thank you to the likes of Domino's that I've seen bringing pizzas onto the ward, McDonald's. Um, Costa coffee, free stuff being given to the nurses. That's amazing. But do remember to look after your mental health and well-being because it is important. It is important to all of us. So a quick checklist for those who have just joined us because I'm, I'm definitely going now. A quick checklist for those who are here today. During this COVID crisis, have a routine in your house. Continue with the routine you've had every day. Have a good sleep pattern. Look after your diet. Do not focus on, what's in, what, on what is not important. Focus on what is important to you. Enrich your social inclusion. Do you like meditation? Do you like yoga? Do you like mindfulness? Do you like relaxation? Do you like a foot massage? What do you like? Do you like to pray? Do you want to read the Bible? Do you like to read books? Are you a writer? Do those things. Do those things. I obviously say no to domestic violence. It's a topic very close to my heart. Some men or women might not slap or hit, hit you, but they could psychologically abuse you. Emotional abuse. They may not say a word to you but do things that actually abuse you. That is unacceptable. We don't know how long this COVID crisis is going for. And can you imagine somebody living with their abuser for months and months and months? It's unacceptable. As I've said, there's help out there. You cannot be abused and it's, it's against your human rights and it's not good for your mental health and well-being. So ladies and gentlemen, this evening I've been Masao Justin Nachimichigozi with some tips on how to support and help yourself during isolation, during this COVID crisis. For those living with symptoms, keep doing what the government is saying. There's a lot of drinking hot drinks, using loads of vitamin C, apart from washing your hands and sanitize and all that kind of thing. You already have the symptoms, so hydrate yourself. Eat a balanced diet. Contact who you need to contact for support. Keep connected with others. And let's fight this COVID. Because what goes up must come down. I know we'll win. Thank you very much. Good night.